All right, so this is going to be a video about complex numbers, and namely, we're going to be doing the following objectives. We're going to identify and simplify complex numbers, and then we're going to do some operations on complex numbers, and then we're going to simplify powers of i. So by the end of this video, you should be able to do those three things, at least to some level. All right, so first thing we're going to do before we start talking about complex numbers, we're going to talk about imaginary numbers. And it says right here, we've been solving lots of equations, but not every equation involves real numbers involving real numbers is solvable with real numbers. For example, there is no real number x for the following equation right here. So this x squared plus one equals zero. You can't actually solve that one because you would end up with the square root of negative one, okay? And just to kind of show you how that looks, I'm gonna solve this one out right over here. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is subtract one from both sides and you end up with x squared equals negative one. And then from here, I'm gonna take the square root of both sides and you're gonna end up with x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative one. And you can't actually take the square root of negative one, so what they do is they define, mathematicians define i as being equal to the square root of negative one. So in a way you can say this is equal to plus or minus i because it's equal to the square root of negative one. That stands for the imaginary unit, it kinda of says it right here, imaginary unit, um, and it's equal to the square root of negative one. Okay, um, i has the property of where i squared is equal to negative one, and then it says no real numbers, no real number has this property. So right here, this if you square both sides of this yellow, what I have over here in yellow, you would get i squared is equal to negative one. Okay, and then you can write every single form of a of an imaginary number in this following form right here. If there's a negative, essentially what you can do, so there's a negative right here, you can just basically pull that out factor it out if you want to think of it that way as that i right there. Okay, and that's essentially what we're going to be doing in these uh, these problems right up here. All right, so this first one, it says write in terms of i and simplify the square root of negative 40. So first thing I'm going to do for this one is actually factor out that square root of negative 1. So I'm going to take the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 40, like that. Now we know that this square root of negative 1 this thing right here is just equal to i, so I'm gonna replace that with an i. This square root of 40 though, so I'm gonna color code everything here, so this yellow is gonna be broke, breaking down this square root of 40. There's a number of different ways you can do this. You can pull out the perfect square if that's easier for you. Here what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to do a prime factorization of this, so it's gonna be the square root of two times the square root of two, that's four, and then I'm gonna multiply this by the square root of two, that's eight, times the square root of five. So that's the square root of 40 right there. The yellow and highlighted is equal to the yellow that I wrote right there. And here we have this two square roots of two. Well, that's just gonna be equal to two. So this is gonna be equal to i times two times this part right here. I'm gonna use a different color. So this part right here is essentially gonna be equal to the square root Okay, now this is not written in a fully simplified way. Essentially what you do to simplify this is you're gonna put the number first, the two, the whole number, uh, and then we're gonna put the i, and then we're gonna put the square root of 10 right after that. And that's the final answer, two i times the square root of 10. Okay. And one, one way of uh, checking your work on this is if you actually square this out so this purple right here, if I, if I square this out, you should get negative 40. So you would get four i squared times 10. i squared is equal to negative one. We talked about that just a second ago. So it's four times uh, negative one times 10, which is negative 40, which checks out with this right here. So that's one way of, of checking your work is if you just square what you have for your answer, you should get what's under that radical symbol, that negative 40. This one it says write in terms of i and simplify. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull out the i on the top and the bottom here. So it's gonna be i times the square root of 49 divided by i times the square root of seven, okay? Well, i over i is just gonna be one over one, so that's basically gonna cancel. And then you're gonna be left with seven over the square root of seven. Okay, you cannot have a radical on the bottom for whatever reason, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply the top and the bottom by root seven. And what this is gonna do is going to rationalize the denominator. You're gonna have seven root seven over seven because root seven times root seven is seven. So if I just multiply across here, it's equal to this seven right here. And then we have a seven over seven right here is equal to 
root seven, and then you end up with the answer of the square root of seven. Another way you could have done this is just gone, well, 49 divided by seven, and then you do the square root of that, which is equal to the square root of seven as well. So if you wanted to kind of just start right away with that, it might have been a little bit easier. Uh, completely up to you. You get the same answer either way, but just wanted to show you another way just in case you wanted to. All right, this next one here, write in terms of i and then simplify. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna factor out that i again. So we're gonna have i times the square root of three times i times the square root of 12. Okay, from here it's gonna be i squared times root three. And then I'm gonna color code this to root 12 is gonna break down into root two times root two times root three. Okay, this i squared right here is just gonna be equal to negative one. So what we can do here is we can simplify by combining this root three and this root three right here to get three. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the twos. We're gonna combine these two right here to get two. And your final answer is gonna be negative six. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is complex numbers. Now complex numbers are basically any number that has a real number component to it, as well as an imaginary number component to it. So this A is just a real number, kind of says it right here, it says A and B are real numbers, okay? But the B has an imaginary unit with it, so that's the imaginary component of it. And it says right here uh, in the next paragraph, it says in the complex number a plus bi, so I'm reading right here, a plus bi, a is the real part, and b, i, is the imaginary part. Okay, it says b is the imaginary part, but you get the idea. Um, it says the a and bi terms cannot be combined because they're not like terms that is important to understand. Do not actually combine them, keep them separate. And then complex numbers are always going to be simplified in standard form where it looks like this, where it's a plus bi. Okay, we're going to do some examples that basically show this standard form in action right here. So it says write as a complex number in standard form. All right, so first thing I'm going to do here is factor out that i. So this is going to be i times the square root of 9. So I took out that negative and then put the i right there. Okay, I'm gonna combine the real part, so this three and the seven right here, so we're gonna have a 10. And then this root nine right here is gonna be three, so it's just gonna be 10 plus three i for your final answer. All right, let's do the next one. It says, write as a complex number in standard form. We got this one right here. Let me zoom in so we can see it a little bit easier. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is combine this three and this four to be seven. And then I'm gonna combine the negative two i and the positive two i. If we add those together, it's just gonna be zero i, which you really don't need to write down. And the final answer should just be seven for this one. Okay, we're gonna do the next one here. So we got a little bit of distributive property and the rule for distributive property is the exact same for these imaginary numbers here. So we're gonna distribute here and then we're gonna distribute here. Okay, so you're gonna end up with 6i minus 15i squared. Okay, there's a little bit of simplifying we can do. So the 6i minus 15i squared is really 15 times negative one because i squared is equal to negative one. So that means this is gonna become a plus and you end up with a final answer of 15 plus 6i. All right, this next one, it says, for number seven, write as a complex number in standard form. Okay, this time we're doing a little bit of double distributive property. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, uh, I'm gonna make a grid for this. It's a little bit easier to work with if you kind of grid this out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say five minus i, and then negative three plus three i. And essentially, what I'm gonna do is make a grid and then wherever the grid meets, wherever the two numbers meet on the grid, we're gonna just multiply those together. Okay, so I made the grid to kind of separate each term. And what we're gonna do is where this one and this one meet, we're gonna multiply those out. So that would be negative 15. 
okay? Where this one and this one over here meet, that would be negative i times negative three, which is just gonna be three i. Okay, the same thing over here, this is gonna be 15 i, and then this one's gonna be negative three i squared. Okay, now essentially what we did is we did the length times a width to find the area of, in this case, it's like a, it's like a rectangle basically. Um, the area is when you multiply those two things together, the length times the width. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to add up all those little individual areas that are inside that grid. So it's gonna be negative 15 plus 3i plus 15i minus 3i squared. Okay, the negative 15 is gonna stay on its own. We can combine these two right here to be 18i. And then negative three i squared is just negative three times negative one, essentially, so it's just gonna be a plus three right here. And then you simplify the real part, and it's just gonna be negative 12 plus 18i for the final answer. Okay, and this number eight right here, it says write i to the fifth as a complex number in standard form. Okay, the easiest way to do this is to notice a pattern, okay? So i to the first power is just gonna be equal to i, so that's not really that interesting. But if we square i, you should know that that's equal to negative one, okay? And then if you do i to the third, it's just gonna be equal to i times i squared. Okay, so if I was gonna color code this, this i right here is the red from up there, and then this i squared is, that orange is negative one. So this is just gonna be equal to i, because that's what i by itself is, times negative one. So you end up with negative i for this one. So i to the third is negative one. Okay, now if you're doing i to the fourth, the easiest way to do this one is probably just doing i squared uh, times i squared which is just gonna be equal to negative one times negative one, because i squared is equal to negative one, that's equal to one. Um, so what it ends up doing, if you kept going for i to the fifth, I'll just keep, let's keep going here with i to the fifth, it's just gonna be equal to i to the fourth times i to the first, because four plus one is five. So i to the fourth is one times i to the first, well that's just i. Okay, and if you notice, i to the fifth power is equal to i to the first power. So you can notice that that pattern is just gonna repeat again. It's gonna go i, negative one, negative i, one. Then it's gonna go i again, negative one, negative i, and then one. So the answer for this one is gonna be i, but an easy way of doing this is just to remember that it follows the pattern every four it repeats. So, and uh, I shouldn't say every four it repeats. I should say if it's the fourth power, then it's equal to one. So what you can do is just break down the i to the fifth right away to a power of four, and then there's a power of one. You know that i to the fourth is one, because I just showed you that. That's gone, so the only thing left is i, okay? So that's one way of doing those when it's you know i to some other power, okay? To kind of show you this, let's just, uh, let's just, I'm gonna make up a problem really quick. But imagine you were trying to do something like, I don't know, i to the 341st power. What you can do is you can break this down into powers of four. Well, 300 is divisible by four because 100 is divisible by four because four times 25 is 100. So what you can do is you can break down the 100 right away. And then you have i to the four, you have i to the 300 and i to the, uh, the 41st. Well, 300 is equal to one because it's divisible by four. 300 is divisible by four. So then you're left with i to the 40 first power. Well, that's just i to the 40th times i to the first. i to the 40th is divisible by four. That's why I used 40, because I knew it was divisible by four. That's equal to one. So you end up seeing that i to the 341st power is really just equal to i because it repeats like every four, basically. So easy way of doing those problems is just remembering that rule. Okay. Next thing we're gonna talk about is conjugates and dividing. The complex conjugate is just, uh, I like to call this good twin, evil twin. So a conjugate is when you have, you know, something like a plus bi and then a minus bi. They're basically, one's a good twin because it's positive and the other one's a bad twin because it's negative, but everything else is the same, except for that middle operation basically, one's plus and one's minus. 
Okay. Whenever you multiply a complex conjugate with itself, whenever you multiply a complex conjugate with its complex, whenever you multiply a number by its complex conjugate, you end up with a real number, which is kind of crazy to think about. You multiply two complex numbers to get a real number out of it. Okay. Uh, so let's kind of do an example of this. And you can kind of grid this out if it helps, kind of like how we did that other one before, but it is kind of just easier to do the shortcut way of doing these. Um, so if you wanted to grid it out, you could do, you know, where it's three minus two i and then three plus two i. Okay, let me make this grid really quick. All right, and I'm gonna fill this in here. It's gonna be nine, this is gonna be six i, this is negative six i, and this is negative four i squared. Okay, what we're gonna do is add all those up. Well, you'll notice these two terms actually cancel out. So you're gonna be left with nine minus four i squared. Well, i squared is negative one, so it's just gonna be four plus, nine plus four, which is equal to 13, okay? The shortcut way of doing that would be just to do this up here, square A and square B and add them together. So square A is nine, square B is four, and then you just add those together and you get 13. But if you want, you can grid it out as well. You get the same answer. All right, there are some problems where you cannot have a non-real denominator. Okay, so an I cannot be at the bottom in the denominator of a rational expression like it has right here. There's an I right here. That's a problem. So what we can do is we can use complex conjugates to get rid of that I on the bottom. That's actually what I'm gonna do right here. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply the top and the bottom by that complex conjugate of the denominator. So instead of two plus I, it's gonna be two minus I, so something like this. Okay, from here, we know the bottom. It's just gonna be the first one squared plus the second one squared. That's not too bad. Top one is a little bit more tricky. I'm gonna just kind of expand that out really quick by using that grid method. So you end up with one, so you end up with one minus four i, and then you have two minus i here. And then we'll just make the grid really quick. And you're gonna be left with a two, a negative eight, i, a negative i, and then a 4i squared. Okay, and you add those up, it's gonna be two minus nine i minus four. So it's gonna be negative two minus nine i. So what I'm gonna do is put that up top here, so it's gonna be negative two minus nine i. And then simplify this out, you're gonna be left with negative two minus nine i all over five, and that's the final answer. All right, last one here, we're gonna convert this to standard form. And if you notice there is an I on the bottom and you are not allowed to have an I on the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply by its conjugate. Now really this is zero plus I. So it's complex conjugate which is really just gonna be zero minus I. But if you want it, you can just write negative I. You're gonna get the same answer either way. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So from here on the bottom, you're gonna have negative I squared if you multiply across. And at the top, you're gonna to have negative five i minus six i squared. And this is gonna be negative five i plus six divided by one. And then you have to rewrite it in standard form, which means the real part has to go first. So your final answer is gonna end up being six minus five i. So that's a video all about complex numbers. If you have any questions about anything in this video, let me know.